Hi, my name's Ethan Lawrence. This is Jesse Leach from Kill Switch Engage. Hi, I'm Scotty Wartsu. Hi, my name's Sean Smith. Hi, my name is Deshaun Kiva. This is Ryan McCombs from the band Soil. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Luigi Cage and Lash Baruch. My name is William Rockwell. I am leather costume maker and uh, mask designer. This is the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 138th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. And these right here are the Chronicles of Rockwell Masks. It is I, Jamie, and joining me as always this week, as always, this guy right here. What's going on, guys? It's Tom, and you should never touch an optician's penis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this week we bring you an incredibly talented guest, a man unlike any guest we've had before. We see wrestlers, cosplayers, theatre performers, and wonder where do they get those beautiful masks and costumes from? Well, today we answer that question. Welcome with companies such as MLW, TNA, AEW, WWE, you name it. This week we bring you the man behind it all, Mr. William Rockwell, as we bring you the chronicles of Rockwell Masks. Beautiful. Could not be on. Thanks, that was a uh, that was quite an intro. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. I like to make you a lot of big people up before we bring, before we bombard you with questions. Make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> You've done, that. You've done that for sure. <laughs> um, first things first, Will. How's your personal Thursday treating you? So far, so good. Went to the dentist this morning. Other than that, <laughs> other than that, it's been a good day. <laughs> oh, but how was that? Was that just a regular the checkup thing? Yeah, well, no, they had to do a, a small bit of work, but you know what? Everybody in that office was in such a a, a pleasant mood that it was it was pretty great, honestly, to be honest. So. <laughs> oh, no, good. I'm glad. There's nothing. But I had to go for like emergency surgery last year, oh, um, yeah. and I'm amazed that the uh, the guy re extracted my wisdom tooth to put his foot on my chest. It was that. It was. Oh crazy. wow. Yeah, it was Jeez. pretty bad. But we're not here to talk about teeth. Um, you know. <laughs> Well, actually, no, I was I was going to, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's a set I brought for, to show you guys. So basically... <laughs> oh. so take, what we like to do at the start of this is take, take us right back to the start, the days of young Master Rockwell. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Has it always been art for yourself or was it something completely different? Like, I don't know, race car driver. <laughs> well, I I was very much into racing as a kid, but um, that was n not realistic. What I, I art has always been there. Um, you know, that's been a, a a theme that has carried through from from as young as I can remember all the way through. But um, uh, you know, everybody says art is not realistic, and it's not really ultimately. But <laughs> who cares? So it's still a dream, <laughs> but it was also like, okay, how can I apply that to the real world? And so, like, architecture came into it. And then when I was leaving high school, it was like more project management type stuff. And I did end up doing that for quite a while um, before making this work. But uh, yeah, no, art has been the the I guess the dream that I've always had from from the start. That's interesting because obviously architecture is obviously is buildings. That's quite a differentiation from what you're doing now. <laughs> right. Well, it was so uh, my, my family is on my dad's side is uh, all construction, um, you, uh -huh. know, you know, as it gets further, it's like miners, like very blue collar workers. So it was like that would be that would be a fit like it, I, I can draw it or at the time it was like I can draw. So maybe I could do that and actually make money doing something creative. So that was the the take on it. It wasn't like oh, I really want to be an architect or something. It was like that's something I could do. <laughs> <laughs> so that building looks terrible. Do you know what? I could do a better job of building that. So here we, here we go. Start it down. <laughs> <laughs> On, on your website, you do describe yourself as a lifelong artist. So what age was it you really fell in love with art that made you want to follow this route? Uh, well, according to my mom, as 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 uh, I've been an artist as long as I, my hands could literally hold on to a pencil. Obviously, I don't remember that far back, but yeah. I don't remember a time in my life where I wasn't... Um, I, school was not a pleasant experience for me, but it was an area where I could just like escape into art, you know, and just like draw or 
I, I like to sculpt a lot. I'm, I guess I'm more of a sculptor than a, like a drawer or a 2D artist, but 2D art is cheaper. So you, like, you need a piece of paper and like a mechanical pencil and you can draw something. <laughs> but uh, so, so that was kind of, I did a lot of drawing or, or any kind of art I could from, I, I don't remember a time where I wasn't, um, except as an adult where there were periods of time where I just like stopped doing anything creative and then wondered why I wasn't in a good mood ever. <laughs> but aside from that no I there's no there's no like moment where you know I was and and another thing too is just like you know it evolves as it as it goes and it keeps it fun because there's so many things you can do uh artistically there's just so many mediums and so many things I still haven't even played with so mm. uh, yeah so so no beginning no genesis I guess birth <laughs> <laughs> is anyone like anyone like ever influenced you in that sort of retrospect like you've seen someone and gone oh my god that's so cool like I'd love to be able to do something like that oh yeah for sure well I guess my initial you know uh footing is my mom she's a she's a very skilled artist she's a painter and um, yeah so she does these days she does more like like uh mixed media type stuff um she's done all kinds of stuff over the years but um she definitely helped foster my artistic flame and keep that nurtured through through my childhood so definitely her as far as like uh idols or something like that going forward the first one that always comes into my mind is Tim Burton I just absolutely have always loved that theme that style that kind of dark element to it and um I love stop motion animation in general so that's always I did that for a little while too or like freelance that for a bit to to try it it's a lot of fun to do that but very time consuming but uh yeah so tim burton is is a big one and then oftentimes it's like specific pieces of art that just speak to me but i can't like pull something up right now you know the, mm. the dolly is is very interesting his, his work and um but yeah tim burton uh is definitely the the top guy for me there and what an inspiration, like you say, because his work is phenomenal and unique. So it makes absolute right. sense. But how did you go from architecture to mask and costume making? How, that, how <laughs> does that happen? <laughs> well, so I never, never even pursued architecture. That was like a, that was kind of a early high school. Like I could probably do that, but um, I don't remember why, but it just never like happened. And then I ended up, actually going into project management, you know, right after high school, I didn't go to college. Uh, I, I went right to work. And so, you know, kind of doing that, you know, where you get a job and you're, you never stop looking until you, <laughs> and I did that for a few years until I found what I liked. And that was, a uh, got a sales role. And then I ended up doing project management after that and just kind of art on the side. I do a lot of, uh, you know, I have been in during that time, I did a lot of uh, metal sculpture, so welded junk metal together and, and made sculptures out of that. And I had that shown in a couple of galleries, but it was nothing, nothing. I give us some extra money. I could buy more art supplies. That was all it ever was. Um, and then I started with the, the mask stuff. Uh, that actually has a, the masks themselves have a genesis with my mom showed me a video when I was 14 of a some Ren Faire guy making uh, leather masks. And I just thought it was really fascinating. I loved how it looked and I've always wanted to try it. We were very poor though. So it wasn't like, I want that stuff. Can we have that stuff? I was like, no, that goes in the pile of maybe some days. And uh, so anyways, I, I end up at a flea market and I buy all the wrong type of leather. Uh, they had like flats of leather and apple boxes. And I was like, and they were relatively cheap. So I was like, well, I'll try it. And then I got it home and realized that's not at all the right stuff. But it was enough for me to realize like, no, this is something I really do want to pursue. You know, because the thing about a lot of art stuff is when you get into it, the startup cost is significant. And if you don't mm. actually like it, that startup cost is gone. <laughs> so <laughs> leather is a kind of, you can start leather pretty cheaply all in all, I guess now I realize, but it, it was, you know, little cost prohibitive originally. Anyways, I, uh, the very first one I made with the right stuff, I messed up badly, but it even sold on Etsy and like everything I've made sold on Etsy at the beginning. And then, so it just kind of 
did well there. And then uh, James Cooper wrestler um, found me on there, asked me to do a mask for him, a, a custom commission. And he paid me all of it up front to make this commission. It was the first uh, mask commission I did. And it just felt really like, wow, this dude's just trusting me with the, the money up front. <laughs> but like, really, I want to really make this cool for this guy. And I did for for my skill level at the time i'm still pretty proud of uh and anyways i like even now i think i, I like the mask that came out for him um but he told everybody and so it kind of just it like caught like wildfire uh, wildfire right off the bat and so that's how it <laughs> developed and then so i i was able to make a choice you know the corporate day job or that and there were some other personal things going on at the time that made that choice more possible for me. So I took the 50% pay cut and sold the house and moved out of the state to a place where I knew nobody and was just like, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to try it. And so far, wow. so bad. That's, incredible. That's in inspirational. I love yeah. that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Life's all about taking risks, though, at the end of the day, isn't it, realistically? That's true. It, it's so easy to get stuck in that mundane nine to five doing the same thing every single day. And then you're going, oh, I really hate this job. Oh, I won't. And, but you do nothing about it. Right. Well, I'm, I, I've come to realize I'm more afraid of being an old man thinking of all the things I could have done than think because I think I regret things, you know, mistakes made. But I think I would dramatically more regret not trying like i'd rather fall as painful as that is than to wonder if i could have flown and be too oh. think about it <laughs> well, i should go on your website anyway <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned before the wrong types of leather what what's classed as the wrong type well so there's well there's a bunch of different kinds of leather but just to simplify for the sake of that question there's like leathers that you would use for jackets and boots and and that kind of thing so like chrome tanned basically we'll call that and then there's vegetable tanned which is that leather that comes in rolls it's it's skin color that's the stuff that you can carve you can shape you can do all the fun stuff with the the chrome tanned you can't do any of that stuff with you have you can, you can sew it into shapes but that's it. it you don't dye it you don't carve it you don't do any of the other stuff so i bought flats of chrome tan and deer skin and so i couldn't do any of the stuff with it. even and i was trying and i was like this isn't working at all <laughs> <laughs> but so that was the wrong side and then the then i was able to get my hands on some vegetable tan so awesome. are you completely self-taught then oh uh, well i mean um well self you know what i mean well because i think about a lot of the mask stuff is like as far as leather working, yes, for sure. I, I, I taught myself, I found stuff on, off, most of what I've learned has been little brief clips of something on a video that's like, oh, I should incorporate that. Oh, that's a cool little trick. So mm. stuff like that. But I also think back to like, eh, like drawing, learning how to draw was pretty critical for this and learning how to sculpt was pretty critical for this because you need to to a certain to a large extent be able to visualize three dimension from two dimension to three dimension which is kind of the hardest part of it i guess is like how do i make that thing look like the sketch yeah <laughs> so yeah so i think of that like learning the sculpting and the other skills and even painting like i you know you have to learn how to control a paintbrush to to paint this stuff or how to airbrush that's a completely different skill like these are all individually separate skills so i think like a lot of those i started learning from like you know i learned a bunch from seventh grade art school so from a teacher so it's like yes and no but as far as like how to carve leather how to do specifically leather stuff that's 100 percent self-taught that's crazy that really yeah. is crazy like with how much you've done on the large platforms your work has been seen to know that you just sat there and went i'll work it out and you've done it <laughs> and fuck me it, it's worked like that is absolutely amazing that is so cool well and i'm baffled every day why uh why me you know like <laughs> me it's just like it's just like anything else i've ever made it's just uh like i don't know why particularly people like what i do or or some of what i do or whatever one particular mask is very popular or 
why the wrestlers want to work with me. It's always in the back of my mind, like I'm not entirely clear on why, but I'll take it. I'm grateful for it. <laughs> Andrade's masks are unreal, right? <laughs> so, so the fact that Andrade, uh, the black one he wore for AW, um, that was you, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, and they yeah, had I a whole. Him after they, like 10. they had a whole storyline about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They had a whole storyline, but they had it hanging for the, there was a whole match involved right. with your mask well. Like that that's insane. Cool. Yeah. Well, and same with like the MJF uh mask that they the devil mask. That oh. was like the, the oh, main of course, yes. for their year. And I'm just like, that's pretty cool. That's a dude, that's like one of my favorite storylines of last year. So, <laughs> you know, I remember being with my ex-girlfriend. She wasn't even a wrestling fan, but she was invested in that storyline. And <laughs> when obviously when the, the tour, when the reveal happened that it was Adam Cole, she went, I'm not watching this anymore. I can't, I'm not doing this. Anymore. Like because she was so upset. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's great. Uh, That's all. And again, it's just like, I'm just here for the ride. I don't know why it keeps happening, but I'm just my my uh take is I'll just keep putting in as much as I'm capable. And if people stop being interested, well, then I'll go back to find a day job. But for now, I'm just, I'm here. I'm enjoying it. I'm grateful for it. People like it for whatever reason. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to. The fact that we were meant to talk to you back in March and you were like, I'm really sorry. I'm mentally busy with WrestleMania 40. Yeah. <laughs> Again, kind of says a whole lot, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, I, I had a few projects. Unfortunately, um, none but one got booked for, for the event but still like you know the fact of getting to work with those people and they haven't debuted still the work yet so i'm really excited Ooh. to see that stuff come out Ooh. but uh Ooh. So, so but still nonetheless i'm it's, yes you're right I, so, but like i'm i'm always like i don't know why but okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot of stress too because i also don't particularly know why so i'm just like uh well just put your best effort into it and hopefully that's what they're looking for <laughs> because <laughs> everybody you know like has their own aesthetic and style that they want yeah. to use so we're, we're talking about like the masks you've done in wrestling were you even a wrestling fan before you got involved in doing this or so no and i do have a uh valid reason why <laughs> when i was uh when i was in sixth grade i watched wrestling with this kid one of my only friends back in that time and uh we ended up getting into a fist fight out front of this like high school get together place and uh like a serious fist fight i mean um like he was bleeding all over the place and then he like he, he spat in my face and said eat my blood bitch like like it was a pro wrestling moment i know and then I just in that moment was like, you love pro wrestling and now I hate you. So everything you like, I don't like it anymore. So I, <laughs> I didn't watch that or anything that kid liked at all. Like, like that was like, no, no, none of that. Holy I wasn't weird like that. <laughs> yeah. But what the hell happened? What, what actually caused that? Oh, who knows? Being kids, being dumb, just <laughs> who knows? I got in a lot of fights when I was a kid. So that was just. One for the tick, mark, tick box, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but eat my blood. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, <right>. part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and it was just such like a surreal kind of experience that I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> you're uh, you're off the off the friend book, that's for sure, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I didn't even I didn't watch wrestling or follow it at all, even for first couple of years of doing this, so. Um, just more like folk well even now I don't now I don't have any time to be honest like I also like to watch racing and UFC but I don't ever um, I don't watch anything at all actually but Master. Master. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to talk about some of the other custom stuff too but as we're talking about the wrestling side of it I might as well talk about that first good I saw you say somewhere that Drew Gulak was a really big early supporter of yours is that right oh, how yeah. did that how did that yeah. come about I'm not sure how he originally heard of me. Um, the first blue check mark who ever contacted me was Sammy Callahan. And then um, I, I assume maybe because he he promoted me on Instagram um, early. So it was like James Cooper. And then I got a bunch of indie wrestlers and then Sammy Callahan, you know, 
uh, in his indie circuit, but he he promoted me several times in his like crew that he was with. I made masks for all of them. Um, and then I assume that might be, I actually never asked where Drew heard of me, but one day he just gave me a call and, um, and we talked for a significant amount of time. He bought a mask from me, not for his wrestling, but for um, somebody else um, at, a, at a school. And uh, well, he, he actually bought two different masks um, early on. And then like, we just always kept in touch. And then he sent, I mean, a lot of people my way. He sent Alexa Bliss my way. Um, all of my early WWE guys are um, thanks to Drew. Uh, even Mustafa Ali has been huge uh, uh, supporter and and vice versa. Um, and I've, I've done a lot of work for him, but Drew also told him about me. So it's like Drew really helped take this from like, you know, a low level thing to like, you know, wow, some some real notable people are, are on the roster now. So. Um, and then over over the years too he's he's also got on phone calls with me to just like offer different advice you know uh, especially because he, he's been in the, the inner circle of it and then i'm not a fan <laughs> coming into it like i have no idea what the <laughs> world is like here but <laughs> so he was helping offer a lot of a lot of feedback to me that's so when the it... eagle on his jacket was stunning Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. I just watched the whole process on Instagram earlier. Stunning. I really appreciate that. That was actually completely his idea. I just, I made the art for it. <laughs> so I didn't you did like actual jackets and like ring wear as well as masks as well. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, I was adamantly opposed to doing that as well. I just wanted to do masks. <laughs> so I was like, I don't make clothing period ever. I was like, I was very very like solid on that i wasn't going to do it and then mustafa ali actually he he asked me originally he was like you should make me a jacket and i was like no i don't i don't do that do you have somebody in mind like he was really trying to get me to do it and i was like no i won't and then he was like well you have somebody at least and i was kind of doing the local fashion circuit in denver at the time so i knew some other designers and i, I sent one his way and that apparently went real bad. Um, and he liked it so little that he had got a refund from this person. And I was like, well, I vouched for this person. And that was so bad that I'm like, well, now I have to at least like try to compensate you by making the jacket. <laughs> Cause he, then he was like, no, you need to, you need to make the jacket. You, you can do it. You can do it. Like he didn't say it in a rude way or anything like that. He was more like, I know you could do it. Just, just do it make the jacket. And so I did. And it took a month and it took three sewing machines because I burned them out. The like household version sewing <laughs> machine trying to sew a leather jacket. <laughs> and then his, it was all lit and stuff. So I had to like figure out that I had to, cause that was programmable lights. It had animation and stuff. So I had to like go to a different like local makers area to like learn how to do the programming for that. It was, it was insane, but um you know, he, he paid me to learn, so that was pretty cool. Is that the one with the light up mask and it had the chest and the hand piece and all that? So, when he right, when yeah, quite so early, I actually, that mask I didn't make his first masks at all, he got that from some guy in China. I only made his last light up mask, uh, the one oh. with like the metal look, but the jacket, yeah, that was me. The not That's the cool. first one with like the blue EL light lines, that was mm. a, I did put the lights in that jacket, but um the jacket itself was made by somebody else but the uh second one with like the, the stripes that that um yeah. you change colors with the little circle deal on it that i made and like i can't tell you how hard that little heartbeat animation was to figure out how to do it was that was a nightmare it just i can imagine like just actually putting the led lights in the jacket all together must be a <laughs> mental process <laughs> it was too yeah, and like if there was a, I think at one point there was a short on one of the strips, and it was like, oh man, it was like in this jacket. It was like, I, I don't know anything about any of this. I got to take this whole thing apart. Oh <laughs> fucking hell! Worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, how much input do these people have into the designs? Are they giving you like details and sketches, or they're like, make me a mask, make it red, go. Like, or does it depend it, on the person? 
it does depend on the person um i personally prefer the less the better like give me an idea and a couple of inspirations like i want a full head cover mask that's kind of like a skull i like the aesthetic of whatever iron man shredder and and you know uh whatever just characters and then i come up with a thing based off of that i usually do a concept sketch and then the final piece uh all my design that's how most of them go but there are like maybe 20 percent of people who come with their own sketch they know exactly what they want and they want me to make that exact thing so that does come too and then um, you know, there's a, a portion of people who know kind of exactly what they want, but I have creative freedom uh, in the final, which is also good because uh, it's like when I'm designing it, you know, there's little things that's like I could improve upon this little thing and that, but you don't know it until doing the build itself, just little details along the way. And if I'm restricted to this exact sketch, it's like it's it doesn't perform well. I, I should put it that way. No, but yeah, so it. it's a combination. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, but but yeah, so I can do all the design myself um, and the sketching and everything to answer that question. I can. It just varies depending on what what because some people want to work with a graphics designer of their choice and all that. So mm. absolutely it makes sense. But I mean, we never actually. What is your actual process though? Obviously, because you make you don't make masks. You make masks for yourself as well. That you obviously sell for like Halloween and that sort of thing. Like, what is your actual process from what an idea is to the final product? Um. Well, the first step is wait a long time. <laughs> I, I, well, I've had a. I've been very lucky to have a very long waiting list since james cooper found me like like it went from like james cooper to 15 to at one point i had more than 100 people on a waiting list it wow. got and that was so stressful it was too much but like even right now i have more than 45 people on the waiting list so it's like even if i just cranked this out and only took two days a mask then it's like it's 90 days <laughs> so insane. yeah so that's kind of uh step one is just like get through the list to, so I can get started on your project. At some point in that period, if I get a moment, then I'll do a sketch. Um, otherwise I end up doing the sketch right before the project starts. Um, they, they either approve it or like uh, this needs to change. And sometimes the changes can be just directly reflected into the actual design work. Sometimes I need to redo the sketch. Um, that depends on the person and how serious the changes are. And then I go to the, the design side, which there's a bunch of different ways I do that. I've got, um, you know, I've made now several, well, I would say 3,000 masks probably is a accurate. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, so I've got like some, uh, you know, I've got enough figured out that I can do a, a few different ways to get the design rolling. But um, once the, and I do it by hand to start, um, like everything's hand drawn. And then I take that and I put it into the computer and I digitally draw it out. Um, not always, but usually I end up doing that now. I have a, a laser machine that helps cut a few steps off because it cuts the leather out and it will help engrave otherwise, uh, or like a, it'll, it'll score the lines that I need to carve in. Um, otherwise you have to like take the paper pattern and you have to like, um, with a stylus, you have to basically emboss it for what you're gonna yeah. end up carving in. And that takes a long time, you know, so that it, it takes away that entire step out of it as well as the cutting of the pieces. Um, so that's why I end up doing it digitally. And then from there, I take those pieces and um, I do the carving and then I'll do, there's like an edger tool cause it comes out, you know, the edges are pretty sharp and not comfortable on your face. So I'll take this tool to kind of round the edges after that, um, and then there's stitching and uh, sewing, depending on, on how it is. So I'll assemble it, and then I shape it into the form, paint it, and then final finishing stuff if there's, you know, accessories and rivets and things like that that need to be put on it. And then uh, straps, tags, and boxed and out. <laughs> Damn, man. That's insane. I mean, this might be a really dumb question. How do you know it's going to fit their head? Oh, I get measurements, but um, fortunately, most like 95% of everybody's face will fit into 
the way I, I make them because I kind of leave okay. extra room for the nose. If the nose is there and you have cheekbone shape, it comfortably fits most people. Unless they have like a, a real beak, then we have to worry about like, you know, we have to make extra <laughs> space in there for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the main concern, you know, is like the, the size of the head, but since most like for that's easy to accomplish for if there's straps. Um, I just make longer straps. If it's a full head design, then um, I just have to make modifications in the, the the back part of that. The face part usually is always going to fit. It's just I have to adjust the size so it's larger. Hmm. So I know obviously it's going to depend per project, but rough guesstimate, how long does it take to go from designing to pack it and get it sent off? Yeah, so that that is an impossible question to answer. And it's also impossible to know because like some projects just go smoothly. And then it's like, hmm. I just I'm like, wow, that went so fast, like start to finish. And I love the thing that came out of it. And some of them are just like problem after problem after problem. And it's just very difficult. I also um, sometimes, oftentimes, especially with jackets, end up like stuck on the design part and I just don't move quickly until like I get that flame of inspiration or whatever mm. <laughs> so um it, it if that happens then longer so I, I can't even say like um but most masks are done and I do it in batches too I never do just one mask I'll do like four people's masks at the same time um okay and that's partially for efficiency sake so that you know, if you're doing the same thing for four people, it's much quicker than you do the one thing or, you know, the one mask, you do all the processes and then the next one you do all the processes. It's, it's a little more efficient to have multiples going. Um, and then also it gives me the ability to, when I'm stuck on one design, for example, I'll move to the next design and work through that and go through the, the queue of everybody's and then come back to the first one and usually it's cleared up by then and i'm good to proceed um so so that's also makes it difficult to answer that question because like a batch can be done in two weeks um and a batch mm -hmm. can be anywhere from four to seven masks usually um but it can also take longer if especially if there's like a really complicated uh yeah. mask or like one that was just difficult to design for whatever reason and some of them just don't look good to me and, and I won't move forward to the next step if that previous step doesn't look good enough Bad. to me. I, I mean, it's all, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder or whatever, but <laughs> it's got to look good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, have, have you ever had like a moment where you just woke up and gone, oh, I, that design, and I run outside and decide to stuff? <laughs> no, well, no, no, uh, I, to be, to be honest, it's usually hits me in a, like a, I, I like to bike ride or mountain bike or something like that. Nice. And those ideas will pop into my mind at that moment or like in a shower. Usually they'll hit me when I have no ability to get to that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Record voice notes on your phone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> So in regards to like making them, because you're doing it for, obviously we've mentioned wrestlers, but theatre, film, cosplay, all this sort of stuff. Is the making process different? Because obviously a theatre performer isn't going to get dropped on their head 20 times in a week to like <laughs> for the wear and tear of the mask. Is is there extra steps you put into that sort of thing? Or is it the same for all? So for in-ring mask uh, styles, I do a couple of things differently. It's usually like a thicker gauge of leather it's uh um you know there's some padding on the inside oftentimes if if there's any kind of pressure points on the inside of the mask um but almost all masks are made just the same way that it's remarkably durable material and also flexible material so like even if it gets sat on or something it should just be put back into place um, i've also had a few different people now even submerge the masks which you should not do <laughs> but it shouldn't work out but it seems to have worked out fine for them and they didn't have a, a problem with the mask so it's like um not not a big difference is required it, it is however for like like if i'm working with women or i'm working with like a dancer or something like that then it actually has to be ultra light and thin so it's mm. the opposite approach for that um but most people's masks are made using the same 
basic process and materials. Is there Interesting. certain materials you really enjoy using? Like, you, do you have a certain one that's like your, like your go-to? Well, I mean, uh, well, yeah, leather. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, so it's like um, I, there are different types of leather, but I actually, when I'm buying, when I go to the leather store, it's not like they're, you know, they have their different types and those are bracketed by cost. But I bought some of the most high-end leather that you can get and the cheapest leather you can get. The cheapest is cheap, like, don't want to get that but the most expensive and even the middle range all have good and bad hides in them um so i look for wow. a specific thing i go to the leather store and i flip over every single piece of leather and i pull out the ones i want and i usually buy like you know 15 or 20 hides at a time that way it, the kind there's like got to be a little bit of a shine to it it's got to be smooth to the touch these kind of things that i look for um so, so it's like there, there is the perfect hide to use, but I can't say like, you know, I, I like the European bend or something, oh, like that. Just... <laughs> it's whatever, like they have that is precisely the, the, the feel, the feel that I like. Okay. You, you're talking there about using different types of leather and stuff like that. I was going to mention it earlier when we were talking about Andrade, but did I see you made a bag out a, a mask grab out of one of charlotte's bags for him oh, something like yes that. i did that was a stressful project you only had <laughs> one go at that <laughs> just, I can chopping imagine. A, just chopping up a louis vuitton bag you know for for art <laughs> that was quite <laughs> quite crazy but yeah yeah and that's actually backed with the same leather as all his other masks so it could maintain shape I remember reading that. I was just like, how the hell did he convince his wife to give up a Louis Vuitton bag? <laughs> like, what? I know. <laughs> they haven't probably bought her a new one. <laughs> probably. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was working with Andrade has been great because uh, he is open to this was his that was his idea completely. But he's open to like the, the sequin idea or whatever was very expensive materials cost. And I'm like, but I think it would be really cool. And it ended up like being really cool. So, but he was always, he's always been open to like, take it on the cost of a maybe. And, and, and it's been fun to work with him. Cause I can be like, you know, I've, I've always wanted to kind of try that. I think we could make something cool with that. <laughs> so. I think my favorite one out of all of yours I've seen is an Andrade mask. And that was his Royal Rumble return with the gold crown. Oh, thanks, I remember yeah. he came out. I was like, "Holy fuck, that is beautiful!" <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. That one, that was another one. I wanted to try like real gold leafing, and that was twenty-four karat gold leaf on those. Uh, so, so it was like you know, I was like, I think it would look better if we use real gold leaf. And he's like, "Okay, <laughs> go for it." <laughs> <Fair play. laughs> so, that's absolutely amazing. I did, I did want to say as well because obviously. Over the past like few years, comic cons, cosplays, all this stuff has become really big in culture. Has that affected like the work you get as well? Because people want this high quality cosplayers, and I know you do work with cosplayers. So, have you had an influx of that sort of thing over the past few years? I wouldn't say an influx. No, it's a uh, it's hit or miss on the cosplayers. A lot of cosplayers, you know, make their own stuff as part of it, um, and then the other part of it is they are the type that want very, very specific things. So I'll have to think up front, like make very sure that I can make that exact thing. And, it, and mm. so I turn down a fair bit of them if, I, if I'm not convinced that I could do, because like there's simple little things like with leather, you can't get like a high gloss plastic or metal finish. You, you just can't, it's, it's porous material. So um, stuff like that if I know that they really need that to you could you could like cover it in like resin but then why use leather at all so you know what I mean so it's like little things like that but um, no I I get several a year but I wouldn't say you know like it, it's not a large percentage of the customers I get that's fair I, I, I just thought because you know like you're seeing a lot of this nowadays like, yeah, it's so true. popular so I'll, I'll, there you go I'm just wondering <laughs> well, and a lot of them, I think, prefer to use like EVA foam and stuff like that because it's really lightweight. So they're, mm. you know, walking, they're not needing anything durable. They're walking around the uh, event for an entire 10 hour day or whatever it ends up being. They need it light and point, yeah. usable and all that. Leather's yeah, a bit, 
serious. <laughs> yeah, we're in a leather mass for 10 hours. I can't imagine the face sweat you'd have after the end of that. Well, actually, <laughs> you'd be surprised on the, the face sweat. I would say leather is the best mask you could have for breathability because one, it's porous, so it will help wick the moisture off of your face. Um, because like all the other mask types are like some form of rubber or plastic or such as that, like you can get a Lutra mask, which is more breathable, obviously than leather, but everything else is more like, uh, hard to, uh, like hard to think of the word, but like, it's, it's a, a solid material up against you. There's no breathability at all. Yeah. So that sweat is insane. But as far as like, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of like the armor is heavier, like than a foam thing. So just like over time it'd be, but the masks also are even, you know, oftentimes as little as like 10 ounces for a full face cover or, um, you know, like a, a eye mask is like four ounces. So also really lightweight, but the armor gets to be in, start to get pretty heavy. <laughs> Jackets too. Have you ever had projects that you've been given where it's, you've just got like, like or ideas given to you where you're like, this is just not going to work? Oh yeah. Yeah. I turn, I turned down maybe 10% of everybody that comes well, to damn. Yeah. I, I won't, I also won't accept a project if I personally don't feel like some kind of a, yeah, I could do that. I want to do that. Like, like I, I won't, okay. even, even if it sends me to the, to the day, back to a day job, I, I can't do something that's like, especially now, now I've, I've really made a, cause I, I did that for a little while and I just wasn't proud of the work. And then that affects the confidence for the next work. Yeah. And then you start just, yeah. you know, feeling like, I have to feel like everything I'm doing, I am proud of. I don't really care if anybody else likes it. It's very important to me though, that what I did is like, that's cool. I would, I, I would have that. I would keep that thing myself. And then, so if any project is kind of like, a, I like, I don't want to say this in, in, in a way that would maybe offend somebody else, but, but at the same time, I do also say this to my friends a lot that, you, you know, you can only polish a turd so much. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. it's true. It's true though, but it, but it's true. But it is, you know. And I've now completely forgotten what I was going to say. So brilliant. So my brain is completely shut off. Then I had I had something to follow there, Will, and I've now it's, it's gone. <laughs> Throw them off for polishing turds. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose I wasn't expecting that to come. I think that's like, I know what I was going to say. Would you not have a team? Not a team, but would you not have people to help you with this sort of stuff as well? Because you were saying that your backlog is crazy. Yeah, um, I I know it kind of takes away from like the whole you doing it, but it's your work, it's your stuff. You know, you've got to like it that sort of thing. Would you ever get anyone to help you at all, or no? Yeah, and I have um, off and on. I actually maybe two months ago, hired a friend of mine as well. Um, and I'm not worried about it, like not being my work because I don't give the, any of the design or paint type stuff to anybody else. But there are things like hand stitching the pieces together that don't have to be done by me <laughs> or even yeah. just like put, put it in a box and send it like that kind of uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it saves time if I don't have to do it. The problem bef uh, earlier on has been that I think a lot of people viewed the the job as maybe they viewed like taking the art class elective in high school, like this is be, be an easy paycheck. And the reality is, is the work that I have somebody do is very factory work. Like it's tedious, mm. it's it's effort. You, you gotta earn your check kind of a thing. So, um, Makes sense. But, but the friend of mine who's, who's working now is um, helping a lot and seems to enjoy it, so. Good, good. Cool. And and also going back to when you said that, you know, you want to, if you're sending something out, you've got to like it too. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because why would you want to send something out? You're like, oh, I'll be fine. And then, you know, <laughs> someone where, someone else goes, why? why? Do you know yeah. what I mean? You, you right. don't want that, that bad press, I suppose. Yeah, you, true. You, you want to give everything, you want to give it 150 million percent every time. Right. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like half ass go, oh, I'll be okay. And they're like, well, well, yeah. you know what I mean? So, well, yeah, and I, I'd like to think you never know who's watching. Like, there could be somebody who's like just seeing how you pr progress over time, and then you put out that one piece of trash, and they're just like, no, we'll, we'll not work with that guy. Yeah. Because, you know, or, or even beyond that, though, from just an artist perspective, like any piece I've done, 
uh, art period that I don't like. Like, I don't want, like, I used to give away all my artwork when I was learning. Like, I don't like any of it. Just, I'd give it away or throw it away, all of it. But, uh, you know, with this stuff, so it's like, like kind of like that mentality. Like, it's got to be, at least to me, it, and again, I don't know why other people like it. And it's not, it's important to me that I like it and the person who bought it likes it. That's, those two things are very important to me. Everybody else, if they don't like it, that's fine. Um, but I have to like it. And that's, but like you're saying, there are down downline rewards to that. If, if I had a huge perfectionist problem for a long time, having to like, it's got to be perfect, but that doesn't exist. I, I've finally come to like more of an idea of like, instead of perfect, it just has to be like, I have to be convinced that I put in the best work that I could and I put yeah. in the time and I can't improve upon that. It's not perfect. It never will be perfect, but it's my perfect and that's good enough. And, and I feel good about it. So, but yeah, yeah. And so the, my main thing is, is like, yes, the working with future people or other people seeing it is, is something to worry about. But for me, it's actually, if I send something I don't like that has such a hit on my confidence and since this is a uh nothing but creative like i have to come up with everybody's project from scratch there are no templates there are no patterns that i use for anybody's stuff jackets or otherwise it's all from the ground up and so with that i have to be like high level of confidence that every project i can do this and if i send garbage out then i'm like you know or even if it's also, even if I send something that I really like and the customer hates it or doesn't seem to like it much or something like that, that also is kind of a hit like, oh no, maybe it's not, maybe it's not good anymore. Maybe I'm losing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I suppose that not being a wrestling fan, obviously, because that's where majority of your work is at the moment, maybe helps you. Because obviously, if you're getting this course, Andrade, for example, you're like, holy shit, Andrade doesn't this, Andrade, oh my God, like, I want to make sure this is absolutely spectacular, I want to make sure I've done this, okay, and then you start overthinking it, and like, okay, I need to make oh, sure, right. do you know what I mean? Whereas, right. because obviously you're not a massive, so you're just like, to me, it's just like, yeah, cool, I can do that for you, it's no problem at all, here you go. Right, that has been <laughs> helpful, just to be like, yeah, yeah, well, and, you know, I, I put in all the effort for everybody, so it's like, if, yeah, whether it's Andrade, or whether it's a, guy needing something for halloween it doesn't actually make any difference to me in terms of how much effort i'll put into it it's like yeah. all whatever your idea is and your budget is i'll put the best work in to that like like that we can do so right. that has been helpful and like if I, I if i had to fanboy if i had to make something for like tim burton we'll just go back to that yeah i would i would freeze that's <laughs> never start <laughs> everything went well went once so well yeah <laughs> was, was in it. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> i start working a grill in the back of a kitchen somewhere <laughs> <laughs> um, i did love your black raven um and your bluebird masks and looked like the core okay. owls from batman absolutely beautiful i appreciate that 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 raven mask actually is the most sold item i've ever done and the first one i made was one of my first 10 designs i ever did no I way it, yeah i made it for my grandmother uh for oh. yeah yeah the first one was red and then a customer was like could you make this in black and then as soon as it was black like people well i don't it's not technically black it's like i made this grace he wanted it black but i like made this gray scale thing and then now i've made like 120 of those things wow <laughs> wow that is awesome that is amazing. Wow, so, I appreciate it. So, well, I am conscious of time, but I did I did want to ask, looking back at your career, like you've worked with some incredible people from all about, are there any particular things you've done that you look back on and go, yeah, I'm proud of that one. That was a good day at the office. Is there any particular pieces that come jump to your head? Um, there are a few. Uh, oftentimes, my favourites well as far as like people definitely alexa bliss is probably one of the the top she was just like always she was very cool to work with she's been a um and helpful promoter but like the just that went to wrestlemania and stuff it was like a easy to work with so it was like a very easy fun win and also collaborative she did all the sequence on that at the end so that that comes nice. to mind um as far as like just projects it's it's often for like like for example i made a 
I'm I like I like have always liked video games. So like Assassin's Creed is a very great game. Oh. Although it never ends, the story never ends, which is annoying. But, <laughs> 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 However, I made a, a Black Flag though. I forget his name. I forget the 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 character's name, but I made the the Assassin's Creed Black Flag main outfit um fully like full replica he the guy even bought like a a doll with like fabric clothes that i could take and like ex see exactly how it was made so i could make it exact replica and it was really fun and i'm really happy with how it came out so that's like stuff like that like it's like just one-off things that i'm like i really like that um but also i I guess I don't get hung up on many things that I'm doing because it's like on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Like even you just asking that, that's all I can literally think of in the moment. I'd have to like <laughs> scroll through my Instagram and be like, oh yeah, that one too. And oh yeah. That one. <laughs> Cause right now my brain is on like, you know, the next five projects, like oh, yeah. that was cool. <laughs> so amazing. Mr. Stevens, do you have any more questions for our one? I do. Guest? I do. Before we let you go, Will, when you first started out on this journey, you know, when you first knew what drawing was and that sort of thing, building sculptures out of metal, you know, partially looking at architecture, now building masks and making things and being creative in your life, did you ever think this is where you'd be today? Oh, absolutely not. At, at no point. It, like, again, it's like it's not realistic. To be a creative person and, and even uh, for the duration of time that I've been able to do this, uh, it, it seems very, it's very much a gift. Like this is not a common thing to be able to do uh, without some other additional source of income. Like usually people need to be like, this is the hobby kind of a thing. So to be able to do it still seems unrealistic. So no, I, I've never, never, uh, never thought at all I'd be able to, well, and the funny thing is I definitely never thought I'd be like making costumes. That seems so like, I actually quit a job when I was 18 because they were, I, I was working the wood shop in a factory and they were closing down the wood shop for a period of time and sending everybody to the sewing machines to, to like upholster. And I just refused to work on a sewing machine. <laughs> I, oh, I, how I, ironic. No, I just did not want to do it. It didn't seem like something I would enjoy. I was just like, no, so I quit the job. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely didn't think I'd be making Jack and also really enjoying doing it too. So no, no, at no point did I think that was going to happen. And anyways, like when you think of like, you know, uh, being an artist, you think of like some gallery artist selling a single piece for tens of thousands of dollars or something like that. And it's like, yeah, that that's the 1% of people with some really, they know some people <laughs> incredible so. well before we let you go plugs social medias websites where can people find you out in the world uh at rockwell masks on all channels um just recently started a tiktok too so um and instagram uh i've started doing some videos so i uh, would love to have people check that out uh, change the way i've i've kind of been showcasing the work um, so a TikTok follow would be great. <laughs> um, also YouTube subscription would be great. I'm trying that out. But, um, other than that, rockwellmass.com, if you want to see the work, um, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I don't have much else going. <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, thank you so much. This has been absolutely amazing. Really enjoy talking to you today. Thank you both as well. It's been great. Um, we'll definitely do a part two. Uh, sure. we'll definitely do something when you have more time, maybe later in the year or something. William, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you as well. Really I wish good. you all the best of the projects and we'll catch up soon. All right. Sounds great. Gentlemen, have Cheers, a great one. Have fun. You too, pal. Take it easy. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Jamie, so I was at work yesterday. <laughs> yes. Minding my own business. And uh, our ophthalmic director was sat, was stood at the facimeter doing his bits and pieces for facimeter and some glasses, which basically tells you what prescription is in those glasses because you don't know, because they're from somewhere else. He was happily just doing his bits and pieces, stood in front of the confidential waste bin. I had some confidential waste. <laughs> and I was like, I must dispose of said confidential waste, uh, as it can't be left out anywhere. The confidential waste slit is right at crotch height. So... I went to throw the... I was like, oh, sorry, Terry. I'm just behind you. I'm just going to throw this in. And he was like, yeah, no bother. Threw it and missed. 
So that I then went I, to then push it and with a cupping hand motion as he turned around and I full on grabbed his cock and balls. <laughs> and that's why you should never judge, judge an optician's penis. So while he was doing his bits and pieces, you decided to fumble his bits and pieces. Okay. Pretty much. And then he said, he went, fucking hell, Tom, if you want to pay rise, you just have to ask. <laughs> At least he made a joke of it, fair play. Yeah. And then later on in the day, I was desperate for the toilet, as was he. And he went, don't you be fucking coming with me now. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I shall wait. <laughs> I was like, for the near near future, it's like whatever you want, mate. Yeah, yeah, done. Just, uh... I might as well. Jameis got on my knees. <laughs> That's all I could say. Was it was it literally like a full fucking cup? Full fucking cup. Yeah. Never neglect. Never neglect the balls. <laughs> so when you first said it, I thought, like you went to put the bit the rubbish in, and it's all brushed by accident. But no, I, went to, I went to catch to put it back, and as I went to catch, he happened to turn around. That's hilarious. I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Only you. <laughs> I know. Um, <sighs> but of course, in the whole retail environment, I just had, I told one person and now everyone knows about it. So, of yeah, course. There we are. Yeah. But, you know, I, the word has to be spread, Jamie. The word has to be spread. You know? Oh, it, it's like, it, well, I I had an email from one of my colleagues the other day. It really made me chuckle. So I told other team leaders as a head up, head up sort of thing, and now the whole team knows about it, and I don't know how. Mm, I had a message from my father-in-law saying, hey, I've heard you got to do this. I'm like, how the fuck do you know? I didn't tell anyone in the team. Human beings, mate. Human beings. Blows my mind. So when you hear really meaningful lyrics and songs, yes. do you hear the meaning in the lyrics and songs, or do you just go, this is a fucking banger, and just sing your heart out regardless of what the lyrics are? Because... Um... I don't really hear the meaning behind the lyrics, so I just like to belt it out. So I can literally be like, she cheated on me with my dad after she paid me. Oh, my God, this is such a tune. Oh, my God, unbelievable. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd like to hope if it was on the nose as that, I might click on to what I'm singing. So yeah, I'd probably... But I do know exactly what you mean, yes. Yeah, you'd be absolutely <laughs> lost in, like, just lost in translation of the track. Like, oh, my God, unbelievable. She got shot in the head. <laughs> and no one cared. Oh, God, this song's so good. I can feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I found out the other day, I, I'm probably like the last person on the fucking planet to know this, and the name has escaped me, but there's an Avenged Sevenfold song. And I found out yesterday it's about fucking necrophilia. I did not know this. I've listened to this song loads of times. Is it Dear God? I can't remember what it was called. It's one of the really, is it one of the really slow ones or something? Yeah. Oh, I, can't, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really slow one. And I was like, I had no idea. There's a Motley Crue song called Without You. I love that fucking song. And I was watching some video and it's like, oh yeah, that song's about like loving someone and you love them so much you fucking kill them. I was like, is it? <laughs> but do you reckon people just make that shit up? Uh, normally like... I would agree, but as it was the person that wrote the song telling the story, I'll, I'll give you this one. Okay. But yeah. Okay. I thought it might be like the whole fake news bullshit going around no. again. <laughs> But at the same time, I remember hearing somewhere that, you know, Round Round by the Sugar Babes. Apparently yeah. that song's all like masturbation. I'm like, how many kids have sang that song? Bit weird. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. I've just had a shower. I might have to go back. <laughs> oh, I feel dirty, mate. That's awful. Round Round Babies. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> I feel a bit uncomfortable in here, isn't it? So sp spend the night on me, I think. Yeah. That kind yeah. of makes sense, yeah. Don't need no man. Get my kicks for free. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. When you think about it, it makes sense. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel very odd right now. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, makes you feel a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> Just a little bit. Same time, I like the idea of musicians go, we're going to write this absolute bop, as the kids say. It's going to get played on the radio everywhere. But what you don't know, really, it's about me having playtime. Like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Do you reckon then Wanna Be by Spice because it's about gangbangs? It wouldn't you surprise me. You've got yeah. to get with my friends. So it wouldn't surprise yeah. me. So yeah, no, like it'd just be really funny, right? What we'll do is we'll write a song about gang banging, but we'll make it like the biggest song ever. <laughs> like, and everybody will fucking sing it from grannies to kids. It'd be lovely. Bloody love with that. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll call ourselves fucking like adjectives for no fucking reason whatsoever. It'd be fucking great that. And it'll really click on. Anyway.
they did a lot for women and stuff in so they did. you know i'm not smashing it I'm not smashing it i'm not bashing it in any way <laughs> shape or form um you know i just I'm just making jokes out of stuff all right what we do here all right jokes um jamie why the fuck did you salute magpies Never understood that one. Oh, one for Toro. Oh, I'm very sad now. I need a second one. Quick, for joy. Where the fuck is it? Like, or was it? Too, I don't know. It's just weird how people make yeah. up these old wives' tales and then be like, "You must chap your cock on a pigeon." <laughs> Salute oh, a magpie. Okay. And shout hoorah at a kestrel. <laughs> Every time you see a kestrel, a hoorah must be must be announced. <laughs> Otherwise, you will have bad luck forever. Is it magpies as well? Can't just... for fourteen days straight. <laughs> otherwise, you will die. <laughs> oh God, I don't remember. I don't miss that shit. Fucking hell! But is it magpies that you not only salute, you're supposed to say hello to if they're on their own? Because it's Are you? good luck. If because I, I don't know. Well, <laughs> magpies turns around. Morning. Oh fuck! What? <laughs> Holy shit! Am I Doctor Doolittle? What's going on here? I just... <laughs> Am I Doctor Doolittle or Ace Ventura? What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Why can I talk to one of them? Why can I hear you perfectly? I don't know, mate. Just got off for shit. What are you doing here? <laughs> a bit weird talking to a magpie by yourself, eh? I mean, I know I'm on my own, but why are you on your own? Not got no friends. Uh, anyway, I'm off. See you later. You say hello, Mr. Magpie. I say hello, Dave. <laughs> You're supposed to salute me, you prick. What are you doing? That's why I put my wing up, like to make it look like I'm hardy, but I'm actually saluting you. Dave? Dave? Fucking hell. <laughs> I remember that when I was younger, like my grandparents used to be like, hello, Mr. Magpie. Uh, what the fuck are you doing? Apparently it's bad luck. It's good luck to say hello to a, a magpie if it's on its own. Oh, fuck me. Superstitions. I, yeah, I never understood it. It's a weird one. Oh my god. <laughs> Work is so quiet right now. You said the keyword. He said no, the keyword. Word. Keyword. Word. Be fucking, <laughs> this is gonna be awful. It's gonna be the worst day ever. Make sure you touch wood. Why touch wood? Just touch the wood. Whatever you do, just touch wood. It will it will stop, it will nullify the keyword. Will it? Yes. But it was no, just touch some wood. Okay. What happens if I touch metal? Then you'll die. <laughs> and there's That'd always some twat that touches someone's head. Because there's no you're... brain, it's like wood. <laughs> yeah, or their penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you erect at work? That's weird. <laughs> dick joke. Dick joke, dick, dick joke, joke, dick joke. <laughs> dick joke. <laughs> I fucking love morning recordings. <laughs> And it's because I'm drinking coffee, mate. I, I've, I've gone for the double whammy. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's a little yeah, bit no. Way better. Like, ah. Oh, my God. It's the greatest <laughs> show ever. It's like, ha, 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 That's literally what's going to happen. Oh. But are you, but was that you transitioning? No. Oh, okay. I thought you were actually transitioning to camera treatment. No. That's, okay. I probably shouldn't, shouldn't I? <laughs> Probably should have said that. Yeah, Come fucking on. catch Sorry. me off guard. Anyway, I, I had this thought last night. You know how my imagination just kicks in sometimes oh, and amuses me. Like a I miss this no. concern. Every time you go, I've got something. Like, oh, no, no, it's okay. nothing. It's nothing bad. Don't worry, it's nothing bad. But I was, I was watching the rabbit last night, and she was doing her fucking sitting there quietly, just doing nothing, and all of a sudden she's jumping in the air and gone, doing a mad zoomies. And I was like, can you imagine if humans had the zoomies? Don't think we do. Kids have them all. We have them at, ch- at kids, and that's it. <laughs> Was it teenager? You've had them. You've had them, then. You've had your fill. <laughs> Don't you think? No, I'm thinking about it. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, kids get it all the time. <laughs> it's almost like you get all your zoomies out of your system by about nine or ten. Probably younger than that these days, but yeah. And then you're obsessed with boys and girls and Snapchat. <laughs> Imagine if we did it as adults, though. You just at work helping someone. The next thing you know, it's like pipe gone. <laughs> We should probably start trying to do a trend, but I mean, at work, there's not very lot of room. <laughs> no, probably so, not for you, no. <laughs> we should do it. We should just all of a sudden, like... <laughs> Pushing a pushchair in a wheelchair. Just go, just fucking run with them. No, just shove them off and get running away. Yeah. So they, they have their zoomies and you have yours. And that's <laughs> like, the, fuck! Oh, my God! Control their zoomies. Yeah. <laughs> they put the brake on and go flying forward. <laughs> But yeah, I think as kids, I think you get it out of your system as a child, don't you? Yeah, probably, because we just don't have no energy as soon as you hit a certain age. Well, as soon as you get to a teenage, you're like, oh, oh okay. No, I have sleepsies. <laughs> yeah. I just want, I just want to sleep all the time. Too late. I don't lazies and sleepsies, that's what you get a teenager. <laughs> and I think I thought you get somewhere in between. Yeah, you go for that weird little phase where you're like, I don't want to be old anymore. I don't want to be going to my 20s and 30s. <sighs> but then you go partying all the time. Yeah. And then that's like your adult zoomies, and then that dies off as well. 
And then you realize they're too old for parties and stay home. No, but then, then you, your whole body starts going, <laughs> like, fucking hell, what's the point? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, just because you've had so much, you've had so much zoomies when you're a kid. Now your body's making you pay for it. And how about zoomie? Is when you put two hands on your knees and try and get up off the sofa. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's the zoomie done. Yeah, that's that's the I'm leaving your house um, uh, sign. That is right. I uh, best be it. Best be off. Uh, <laughs> best be off. Do you re- do you reckon in Europe, because of how blunt they are, just go, I'm leaving, and just go? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, they don't even like, whereas we go, oh, you know, well, drop this at the time, oh, geez, well, you know, really, well, right, you know, busy day. <laughs> I kind of wish I'd have had it in my just go, I'm bored of your company. <laughs> well, Europeans go, I leave now, fuck you. <laughs> I had too much of you, now I leave. You bore shit out of me, I leave. Russians probably don't even say it here. Just go. Just get up. And just go walk off. Yeah. <laughs> I believe Vladimir's had enough of me. <laughs> we are only talking about about the weather and the vodka. Why is it when you talk about when you do a Russian accent, vodka always comes into it's it? Always vodka. Really. Always vodka. Always. It's always. Nothing else. No one really knows what goes on there or cares. <laughs> um, and it's just like I must do Russian accent and talk about vodka. <laughs> It's the same way if you're ever talking about the French, you or most people automatically go ha, 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 every fucking time. Yeah, every Scottish, time. Scottish is all kind of new, even though we don't yeah. even say that. No, no, it's just made up shit. See, again, we're going back to all this made up bullshit, saluting magpies and say, Oh, <laughs> if you're from Scotland, then you need to say, Oh, kind of new. No, you don't. Yeah, you fucking do, mate. <laughs> you're not even Scottish. Why are you? Be- yeah, because listen, right, right, basically, back in the olden times. They always, that's all they fucking said, mate. There was no fucking English language. We didn't let you have it. You couldn't have it, all right? <laughs> Fuck me. So all you could say up there was, oh, I knew, okay? So get over your fucking self, mate. That's basically what happened. So, Pretty much. Pretty much. So again, with Geordies, all they can say is, why are you, man? That's all they can do. Yes. They can't say anything else. All right? Oh, and if you're a Scouser, calm down, calm down. Calm down, down. yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. all they can say, apparently. Um, I love when people do it. Oh, I could do an impression, I Yeah, I could do an impression. Oh, I didn't you. <laughs> you say anything else. No. That's it. That's all I can do. Right. <laughs> uh, excuse me, monsieur. I do believe that the ha 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 and sacre bleu. Uh, apparently, that's all you can say in the French accent. Is those two things? We don't even say, oh, 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 let me see each other. What the fuck is wrong with you? Hey. Or if anyone's for Italian, it's Mario immediately. Oh, yeah. And then doing Mario. that with a hand as well. Yeah. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> Excuse me, I need to make a spaghetti. You're making the pizza, you'll fuck it up for me. <laughs> oh, it's food. You're yeah. making... The pizza, the pasta, <laughs> the fucking pasta. <laughs> the golden <and> soul. <laughs> yeah. Arrivederci. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Oh. And we won't get to what everyone just says about Why are you destroying the pizza with the pineapple? Fuck the fruit <laughs> on the pizza. What's wrong with you? Oh, let's not get that fucking debate going again. Oh. <laughs> it's time for Count's Treachings. Do you want to know something? Callum will be able to tell you in Callum's Treachings. It's cereal soup. Ooh. Hello, this week's treachings come from the set of my own podcast, That Gym Couple Podcast, that I host with my partner, Lucy, where we discuss all things gyms, fitness, gym anxiety, and a bunch of other stuff in between. If you do have the opportunity to come and check us out at That Gym Couple Podcast on Spotify and YouTube, we'd very much appreciate it. I thought we should have a bit of a mellow out. Yeah? yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Well, no, this isn't going to be mellow. Why is Callum Treacher's this week? Given how lazy human beings can be, we're quite lucky that a lot of our bodily functions are autonomous. He's not wrong. Would you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does blow... So, I'm so sorry to bring this up. It does blow my mind when you're asleep how you don't piss or shit yourself. That's it's true. always thrown me slightly because you relax and you chill and it's just nice... It's really yeah. weird, isn't it? You think you oh. would there. Hey, buddy goes, you need to piss, mate. Wake up, like, hello, brain here. 
You need to relieve yourself. Go now. And then you wake up and go, I can't be fucking bothered. Or it's when you just get into bed and get comfy. Oh, always. That happens to me all the fucking time. It drives me mad. Right. Ah. Like, I'll go for a piss before I get into bed. I'm like, I'll be fine now. Lie down. Get into my comfy spot. I need a pee now. Like, you no, have to go out of your room and round the corner. I have to go out of my room, down the stairs. This is Make true. sure I'm clothed because I live with random people. And then fucking do my thing. Come back up the stairs. So because I'm doing exercise, it wakes me up. That is a good point. Yeah, it's so annoying. That is a really good point. It's so annoying, but it's just one of those things. So, like I said about this morning, when I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have an amazing lion day off. It's gonna be great." God damn, it's half seven, eight to okay. week. Right? Okay, let's just get this out of the way, and I can go back to sleep. Get back into bed. I went. Now I just shit. What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> One, two, not come at the same time. You hope they, they would. Who's there? Like, oh, let's wait a moment. <laughs> Not quite ready, mate. Not quite ready. I'll wait till he gets back because he's comfortable. When he's all sorted, I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> By the way, I'm ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Ready. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of weird. Because knowing us humans, we would put it off for fucking hours if we could, because we just can't be asked to get up. Yeah. But but we're never we're never too lazy to eat to do no that motion. Never. No. Never. Yeah, that's probably the only body function that we're like, uh, no, I would do this forever if I could. <laughs> I would never stop. I would never. It would never end. <laughs> that's all I would do. Yeah. But do you ever get worried like, like, like talking your sleep or laughing your sleep or anything? I know I used to talk in my sleep. I don't know if I still talk in my sleep, but the wife's never told me I do. But apparently, I used to. For long conversations, or I'd just say the most random shit. It used to really make my mom laugh because she'd hear me. Or if I like, dozed off on a sofa, I'd just start talking. It used to really make her laugh. I can't remember anything I said now, but yeah, just really bizarre shit. Why do we salute magpies? <laughs> it's so weird. And for some reason, I want to say boo chaka chaka to a hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I had to close my eyes to make that more effective. That was weird. I don't know. I just did this, like, actually just look at, like, I must yeah. be in sleep motion. I must yeah. be at least look like I'm sort of asleep here for the, making this joke to work. Because those listen. are the benefits you get if you watch us on YouTube, that's why. This is very true. You get some acting. It's very, very <laughs> true. Um, what else has come to us this week? The biggest difference between a tech person and a non-tech person is the ability to Google your tech problem. <laughs> 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 oh, so true. It's true in so many ways because even if you're an if you're a tech person, at least you know what you're searching for. Yeah, and you, know, yeah. you know what the issue is. You know what the yeah. problems are. You know what the commands are. You know what you just put in. Whereas if you're not, you just go. I might just turn it off and turn it on again and see what happens. Hopefully that'll fix it. No, okay. <laughs> it's when like the you know the numbers at the side they're in their th the rows of three and sometimes yes. they don't work. That yes. took it took me about a year. Till last year to work out, you need to press numlock. <laughs> I had no idea, so I was pressing these numbers, going, "Why the fuck it work? That's so weird." And I once pressed numlock, and then started. I was like, "No way!" <laughs> but I'm also not one of those stupid bellends that goes, "I was today years old when." Oh, fuck. Hate that shit. Yeah, hate it. Mad. Yeah, I can't stand that. So, yeah, I really was just like, weird. Why is that not working? Let's just smash a few things. <laughs> ah. Ah, okay. The weird thing with the numlock is, though, you all seem to turn it off, but you don't ever remember doing it. Yes. You just seem to or, manage to tap or it pressing the Or pressing the insert key. Yeah. So you press <laughs> insert, and your, your cursor stays where it was as you're typing, so you're typing in your words. Like, wait, hang on, what's going on here? Such a weird technology is weird. I suppose, it, yeah. But if God, you were a tech person, you'd find that normal and be like, "Oh, this is absolutely amazing that they put this in." And you're like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> That's a wonderful function used for this, this, and this." Okay, I'll never use it. Sorted. But, but I always find that I'm too lazy to look at YouTube videos. Like, I can't. When I get half, I get like thirty seconds. Of it, I can't have to bother anymore. <laughs> I I normally have now started loading up the transcript and just doing the search button and just searching for keywords that I need. 
Because you, you normally get a lot of waffle of, hello, my name is Luke. Welcome to my channel. I do this, 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 this. I'm like, get to the point, Luke. If you if you need if you need any advice on DevOps, blockchain, or AI, make sure you go <laughs> check out my other videos, which are on blockchain, DevOps, and AI. Yes. And then you're but... like, dude, like, we don't care. Like, we just don't care. We just need to get to the root of the... Whereas tech is like, oh, yes, wonderful. Oh, right. oh excellent. Okay. <laughs> wonderful. I better make sure I write those down, Luke. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I make sure to check those out and subscribe to your channel. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And I'll hit the bell to get notified. Yeah. And where they're going, just want the answer. Just tell me what I need to know, Luke. Just give, me, just give me the answer. What's going on here? Even better, Luke. Come to my house and fix it for me because I'm yeah. fucking confused. <laughs> my, me and my wife, Nina, decided to start this channel when we were only eight years old. And you're like, I don't know shit about your wife. How's your kids? <laughs> then also, you know everything about them if we've even got to the root of the issue. <laughs> Three hours later, you're like, Hang on, I've got a life to live here, and a kid's going back from school. Fuck, should be waiting at the gates for an hour. Just invest in Luke and Nina's kids. life. Yeah. <laughs> Just so invest in Luke and Nina's life. What's been going on here? <laughs> you forgot what you even needed in the first place, but something yeah. got there. Like, oh, I think I'm a little bit hungry. What was the issue we getting? Three weeks later. <laughs> Why is my computer not working? Oh. Oh, yeah. God damn it. The circle starts back again. to Luke and Nina, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Groundhog Day, but it's Groundhog Week. <laughs> I suppose for non-tech people, they probably didn't even know what to Google. So it's like, um, computer light not working. Yeah. And it gives you nothing. <laughs> oh, I can't be bothered. Comp, no work. Pooter, <laughs> 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 no lighty. I remember, I remember when, I, when I was a kid, we had like a fucking uh, tower PCs and everything. <laughs> yeah. We have one of my mum's technical description for something that happened that I used to come fix would be Jamie, the computer's going dugga, 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 again. So that's how the understanding of some people. <laughs> so you gotta say dugga, dugga, dugga to a computer, <laughs> yeah. salute a magpie, <laughs> say boo ra to a falcon or whatever it was, Kestrel, uh, and boo chaka chaka to a hawk. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, say, this all of these things, you'll get bad luck for 14 years, five months, and 30 days. I know it's not going to happen. You know, share this email. I know it's not going to happen, but if anyone wants to send us a video of them doing any of these things, please do, because it just amuse the living shit out of me. Out of you, yeah. I'd <laughs> yeah. be like, well, okay. Interesting. <laughs> and you've got to say, that's snakes. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> And you must thrust towards worms. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I mean, this worm is just like on the floor. You're like, ha, look at the pathetic thing that just comes out with a massive little holy hand grenade and throws it at you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Shit. <laughs> you get for thrusting at me, you prick. Yeah. Let's get that huge bazooka out. <laughs> it's so funny if you know, get right next to a worm. He's here. I'm a cousin. It's going to say, great. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking game that was. Oh no! Oh, yeah, I loved that loved game. and they tried to make one with pigs, and it just wasn't the same. Oh yeah, the hogs of war. Yeah, yeah, not the same. No, it's worms were never. Worms. Oh, yeah. so good, genius. Something so simple, but something so genius. And something um, so fucking hilarious. Anyway, absolutely, Jamie. What finally should I say is Callum treating us this week from Portugal? If the biggest loser in the world went into competition with all the other losers, would he come first or last? Hmm. Oh, wait, hmm. no, no, it's too early for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for your, 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 your cognitive genius mumbo jumbo <laughs> here, Callum. Well, you'd, you, you'd, you'd be the biggest loser because you won, so you'd have lost the most, so you'd be the biggest loser winner. <laughs> but at the same time, you wouldn't, you'd win, so you wouldn't oh be a loser God, my anymore. Throat. Oh, excuse me, so sorry. I should just want a coffee the wrong way. No. Oh, <laughs> damn, some Lucas then. Um, <laughs> fucking timing on that was beautiful. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going on there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having a bit of an attack on the coughs. <sighs> Not kind of it. Oh, my God. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, <laughs> just remembered something. Um, some dude fucking walked into work on Saturday last week. Mm. And I walked up to him and went, Don't come near me. I've got COVID. It's like, Right, so you're in the middle of a supermarket it's of you out in the f with the no mask on, doing your fucking shopping. And no, <laughs> for fuck's sake, <laughs> talk and telling me you got COVID. Yeah, and it's and it's to uh, 
I need to cancel my appointment for tomorrow. You could have rang us. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm here. Why are you here? <laughs> like, Fucking hell. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. So when I had to give him a, I had to give him a card for a, um, I had to reschedule him. I had to really fucking reach over and be like, make sure you take me like your pincer like fingers don't fucking come near me. <laughs> the one <So>, grabbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bit right here. <laughs> Dude, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> um, <laughs> fuck's sake. What, what's the treat again? <laughs> oh, the biggest loser. <laughs> fucking up. I'm. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Give me a minute. So I don't know how it would really work. No, no, man. It's a very odd one. Because like you said, but would you want to be the biggest winner or the biggest loser in this case? I suppose if the whole idea is to lose weight, if we were on about this show, then I suppose you'd want to be the biggest loser. Yeah, but then you'd be the biggest loser winner. You can't put the words yeah. together either. Yeah, it's the, weird, isn't it? The biggest loss win. Yeah. You are the biggest loss win. Congratulations. It was weird to like the person that came in first place. You're the biggest loser, the person that came in last. You're a loser? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get very you confusing. are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> awful. <laughs> you are absolutely awful. But the thing is, obviously, you go because you want to lose the weight, but then I guess it's about motivation. And it's all about yeah. like the mentality of all and that sort of thing, about actually wanting to achieve and actually want to strive to lose the weight. So it's, it must be really fucking hard. But why sign up if you're going to quit or struggle? Like, not struggle, well, that's the wrong words. Like, do you know what I mean? It'd be like, no, just kind of, like you fucking can. You can sign up for a reason. <laughs> you can do it. So, so do best. Yeah, but worry. still. I remember that show. Why is it gone? Do you know enough people are like, I'm not doing this shit anymore? Probably. Or probably they've just decided that it's not, ex- not acceptable to have this sort of show on TV anymore. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's probably what's happened. Sorry, I completely ruined that truth from my coughing fit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm all right now. No, I don't, know where, I don't know where the hell that came from. I'm just, Callum, I'm so sorry, mate. Uh, that's just a fucking... That's just butchered by the fact that I just was dying <laughs> slow. We got it's to be- the point eventually. It's, it's because I didn't share the hoorah at the, at the fucking Kestrel, and then I didn't share the email. So I've got 14 years of death now. And bad not luck. read it. It says, if you not forward this email, you'll have a coughing fit yeah, in the I middle know. of recording a podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. Fuck's sake. It's very specific. Thank you, Callum. Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful time in Portugal, doing all your runnings and shit, via marathon training and that sort of shit, um, and having the time of your life. How are you doing, Jay? You okay? I'm good. I'm a little bit tired, because when the fuck are I? But yeah, I'm off to go do a double shift today to get some pennies. So yeah, all good. I think you're insane. I actually think you're, you're <laughs> clinically insane. You also visit the dentist today, aren't you? Uh, yes, I had the dentist yesterday, and I'm going again today. De- you had it yesterday and today? Yeah, yesterday so- I went for a clean, which made me very happy, because... I know what this is disgusting, but I had a stain on my teeth for years and it's bothered me because it's right at the front and I, I've always hated it. So I've always like tried to hide my mouth on a smile, but it's gone and I was well fucking happy. I was like, you, went yes! hygien- you went to the hygienist? Yeah. So I was really happy about that. Go on, mate. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Do you reckon yeah. it's like our version of pull-ups or huggies? Yes, yeah, probably. Where it's like, yeah. Jamie, wow, you're a big boy now. <laughs> like, we, should, we should get that every time. We get tennis, and we should get our song as we're like, thanks. <laughs> Fish kept saying you're doing really well and I was like yeah you treat me like a child but it works so almost today. 14 is to prove it um, today I, it's just a conversation today because in about two weeks I'm having they're knocking me out to remove two teeth and do two fillings you're getting knocked things. out for it you lucky fucker I, yeah I'm paying out my ass for it but it's because the last time I had teeth removed it was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life and I haven't and yeah no so I, I, I can't do it like, I can't just sit there and let them put that needle in my mouth. So I was like, knock me out. Do the lot. Just get it done. I knock never got, actually, once we knocked out, you lucky fuck it. But it'd be worth it. Be worth it. Yeah. I right. was like, knock me out. Do it all in one go. Happy day. Saves me coming back for like four fucking times and getting it done and going for this traumatic moment. So, oh, you lucky prick. <laughs> but apparently, you don't, you're not actually out cold. Like, you're still lucid and have conversations with them and everything. It's going to be weird. What is it about July and having teeth removed? Yeah, it was July last year, weren't it, for you? For me, yeah. Well, yeah. they didn't knock me out at all. I never even got asked if I wanted to be knocked out. I would have probably taken that. <laughs> so I asked them. I was like, is there an option where you can knock me the fuck out? Yeah, worth. I'm so proud of you because obviously, yeah. so proud of you getting it sorted. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I'm not proud of the fact. I'm very ashamed of the fact my youth, I did not look after my teeth. So now I'm trying to get it fucking sorted. But who looks after anything when you're a kid? Who no. gives a shit when you're a kid? You give a fuck, do you? You don't care. Precisely. But I'm getting it, I'm getting it sorted now, so we'll get there. 
Good work. Yeah, Good work. But yeah. So yeah, other than shitting myself over the dentist, I'm all right, you. We have to shit yourself, we have a conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, fine. I'm gonna get my beard cut after this. Because oh, it needs it ready for 2,000 trees next week. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing you all 2,000 trees next week. Uh, it's be good to see you all. Um, so make sure you come and say hello if you've listened to this before then. Um, big thank you to everyone that's checking us out on TikTok right now. And to everyone that subscribes on YouTube. Absolutely massive. Mahoosive. Mahoosive. Thank you for that as well. It's graciously appreciated. But yeah, I'm all right. I thought I'd get a line, stage i I've been a very busy boy for the last week. And I thought, I'll get a fucking a bit of a body clock going, get up. It's work, Tom. It's not. Yes, it is. It's Wednesday. You always work Wednesday. No. <laughs> Please, no. Um, so we've got a bit of daytime. Recording. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was good. I agree. Mean, I know you joined in, so I stopped. <laughs> so that was beautiful, oh, actually. Wow, I enjoyed that. That was. That, was a, that should be like our This Morning theme song. <laughs> <laughs> better, better daytime. Recording. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, yes, no, all good, all good. What's your week been like, my friend? What have you been doing with yourself? Um, been fun? Seeing the children, so I imagine. Seeing the children, yes, I went to go see the kids on Monday. I keep losing track of my days this week, I don't know why. Yeah, I went to go see the kids on Monday, which was nice. I get to meet uh, their nan's new puppies, very, very tiny French bulldogs. They're very cute. Um, what else have I been doing? On Saturday, I did my first ever car boot. That was an experience. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. It, really, it really made me laugh because I was a bit like, that's a bit shitty when you just worked till fucking 10 o'clock or whatever it was at night and didn't get home till whatever oh, yeah. time it was and had to be up early, yeah. I and then I gone. had work after it as well. I was a tired boy. <laughs> Do you agree to that? Yeah, yeah, it needed to be done. So, And it was when it was on, so I never get Saturdays off, so it was the, it was the only way I could get it done, so... I wanted all that shit gone. But no, we did well. Got leaner. Our car boots normally on Sunday. I thought this, but apparently it's a Saturday. I, I haven't been to one in so long that I've reached changed or I just remembered it wrong. Maybe I'm in Birmingham. It's just like, well, Bob, what day is it again? <laughs> oh, fuck it. was still on Saturday. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, that was an interesting experience. Fuck me, people like a bargain, don't they? I couldn't oh, believe it, some people. Yeah. Like, how much is this? Oh, 50p? 30p. I'm like, it's 50p. Are you seriously haggling me down 20p? It's just Facebook Marketplace in real life. What the fuck's going on <laughs> Pretty here? much. Yeah. I was like, we were selling everything off so fucking cheap because we just want it gone and out the house. It was like, kids clothes, 50p a thing. Like, like, just get it fucking gone and out the house. I was like, you're still haggling on 50p. What's wrong with you people? But there we are. People love a bargain. People love a bargain. Um, yeah, other than that, and yesterday uh, the kid had sports day and the little bastard made me do the parent race, which was just embarrassing, but there we are. You could have said no. Yeah, I, I, I would have felt awful. you got all these kids dragging their dads up like that and me to just turn around and go, no. I Why felt like a prize prick. <laughs> she, got bad ankle. she got a bad ankle, she wouldn't have run. Oh, so. Could have crawled. <laughs> but it backfired on her because the first race, the kid had to do it with me and she was like, oh, no, no. I was like, you get here, you're making me do it. To move, <laughs> but other than that, yeah. So yeah, that was fun. I bet. Yeah, fucking embarrassing player. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's why. Other than that, and of course, I also got my hair and beard done ready for two thousand trees. And yeah, and then I'm off to work in a little bit. Yay! What about you? What have you been up to? So, um, been seeing Emily, of course. Uh, been. We went for a, we went for a picnic last Tuesday. I think I told you on the show last week. Yes. Um, and then I burst out into a massive heat and prickly rash, and I was Ooh. like, "This is weird." I covered myself in cream. So I went to the pharmacist. She went, "Yeah, so um, you're allergic to the sun." Ah. I was like, "Excuse me." She went, "Yeah, you're allergic to the sun." I went, "Well, I'm ginger, so I thought I would be anyway." She goes, "No, you you need to actually stay out of it or cover up." I'm like, oh. No. Awesome. So it's not sun lotion, it's just the sun itself yeah. you're allergic to. Yeah. Okay. That makes I always wonder why sense. I kept breaking out. And so every time I always wore cream, I was like, but I bought sun cream, I don't get it. So I will burn or whatever, regardless of what I do. Oh, okay. So, so trees would be interesting. I was going to say, last year you walked over with a burnt knee, so let's see what happens. I, I mean, I left out in the sun all fucking day. Yes. So, mate, the crisp on that oh, was delicious. It was so <laughs> good. And when it comes with a big chunk, oh, okay. Anyway, that's, the, that's another kink, I guess, with bacon fat down the throat. Um, 
so yeah, so we'll be doing that. Um, I got to be a guest judge at the Metal to the Masses final in Cheltenham uh, on Friday night with with uh, Simon Hall of Budstock and Crusher Jewel. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, unexpected and also amazing. Really enjoyed it. Massive congratulations to Convey, who are going to be playing at Bloodstock this year uh, with Ollie, who formerly of Neptune Rain. Um, so, yeah, as guitarists, they were really, really good. It was a good night. It was tough, to be honest. I was mm. a bit like, oh, but um, unanimously uh, Convey won. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a tough night, though. It was a tough night. It was, there's some really good bands on. Um, so big shout out to Unto the Ages, Avira, and Hollow Ritual as well, who gave it everything they had. So that was amazing. So we got some summer Simon. Um, really nice that he was like, Hey, before I noticed him. So that was that was That's awesome. That is. It was great. And he said some really, really fucking lovely things about the show, about the podcast, um, and about our association with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. So that was yeah, that was a really, really nice moment of just like, oh. Yeah, this is exactly why it's so worth it every single time. Every week, giving up all the evenings, doing all the shows, all the interviews, just makes it so worth it. Um, obviously, we're off to Trees next week, we so are. which is really exciting. Um, and then on Sunday, I went and did a Specsavers charity day for Sue Ryder. Uh, yes. I did it for Emily more than anything else. <laughs> She's the charity champion, so I just did it for her um, because no one gave a fuck. So... Um, we made a load of money as well, and still no one gave a shit. Um, huh. uh, but she absolutely bust her beautiful little ass, bless her. Um, she worked so fucking hard, and she did an unbelievable job, and I'm insanely proud of her. That's um, awesome. Like she, we walked around those fields. It was a big football tournament, like um, hmm. like kids football tournament. And then it was the teenagers on the Sunday. And uh, we walked around every single person harassing everybody. And we, in, just in cash alone, we did just under 1,300 quid. Wow. Uh, nice. We, card wise, we don't know because it goes straight to Sea Rider. So we don't know what we did card wise. Um, but I reckon you're looking at about 2K. Nice. Good um, work. Yeah. It was, I was knackered Sunday. <laughs> Not surprised. Absolutely knackered. Um, we've also been watching Kin. We're on the finale of season two. Oh, oh wow. my God. If you haven't watched Kin, fucking hell. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Unbelievable. Fans are screaming for season three. Yeah. It's obviously on, got it's on my watch list. Oh, Jamie, get started. Just get started because you won't regret it. <laughs> season two is better than season one as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's so good. Um, so big shout out to Baz for hitting us up on that one, and he's in it. So, um, if you haven't watched Ken, guys, go watch Ken right now. You're missing out. It's on Netflix and BBC iPlayer for yours in the UK. Um, so yeah, and obviously been Rihanna <laughs> been Rihanna in, Rihanna in, and even more Rihanna in. Uh, and I obviously watching the Euros. England were very fucking lucky to go through. Very fucking lucky to go through. Yeah, I wasn't watching it, but it was on in the background. The guy at work was watching it. It was literally mid sentence. He was like, "Oh yeah, so we're going to do this," and he was just like, "So like, oh, fucking hell, what the hell just happened?" Oh, England scored. Okay. So, <laughs> like, this was a bit of a beautiful moment. Like, family wise, I couldn't give a fuck about the team um, or the country, um, but. Essentially, when Bellingham scored that goal in the 95th minute of the overhead kick, my nephew cried his eyes out. Oh. So that was kind of a moment where I was a bit like, nice. oh, beauty. Love that. <laughs> La- Not the fact that England scored, just the fact that that has how much it meant to him was a bit like, oh. That's be- sweet. Like how I feel about when Scotland score whenever that ever happens. <laughs> um, and whenever we win, whenever that happens as well. Um, there was like a cycle chart I saw, which was really, really funny, which was like big win, hope, tournament, lose. And I was like, yeah, the cycle <laughs> begins. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, so, but no, there's no standouts. Like, there's no standout teams at all. No. Maybe Spain and Germany, who now play each other on Friday in the quarterfinals. So we'll see how that goes. Interesting oh, yeah. game. Normally you hear like, oh, this team's definitely going to win it this year. And I haven't no heard any. There's no one no seems to be that excited about it this year. It's weird. It is weird. Um, and obviously, hopefully when you're listening and watching this show right now, there's no more Conservative government anymore. Fingers fucking crossed. Fingers, everything crossed. It's election day tomorrow. Tomorrow. So I know nobody will hear this before. So I just really hope you all voted and you all got what you wanted. Because, come on! <laughs> Let's get rid of these motherfuckers forever. (laughs) 
So he's been he's he's panicking now. Soon he is panicking because he put a tweet out saying, "Don't vote for the super majority," because you know you're getting your ass kicked, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're gone. Yeah, there's no way how they win this. He put a he put another one out saying like, um, "Vote Labour, they'll tax it." And someone put your wife question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Oh, everything. we're going to get taxed. Shit, we're going to lose all of our billions and billions and billions of pounds. Oh. Yeah, it's like food banks. There's like 3,000 before they started. Now there's over 300,000, I think. And like, you, uh, billionaire's wealth was like 2 billion, and now it's over a trillion. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And you're like, well, hang on. What's going on here? Oh, but there's no money for what pay rises. There's no money for the NHS. There's no money for... Yeah, there's plenty, but you've got it all. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's not get into that. Sorry, sorry. Fuck the Tories. Get rid of them. Let's go. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brayden from Say We Can Fly. Just letting you know, we've got a brand new merch store out there. Please let me say the and, link. Uh, let me say the link, please. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, you can say. You can say the link. Yes. All right. Okay. So the link for the shop. So the, link for, is... the link for the shop is www.saywecanfly.com. Shop. All right, good job, Seamus. So www.saywecanfly.shop, uh, 10% off if you use the code. Oh, the let code me say the code, let me say the code, please. Okay, fine, you can say the code. If you use the code. The code is The Chronicles. What? No, it's not. The Chronicles. No, it's not. De- it's The Chronicles, Seamus. Yeah, that's what I okay? said. The Chronicles at checkout, all right? You, you get 10% off. 10% off. Yes, oh, yes, they know. They know, Seamus. Okay. I'm just trying to help, all right? Visit www.saywecanfly.shop and use code THE CHRONICLES for 10% off your order. Available at participating Say We Can Fly restaurants and web stores. Some restrictions may apply, but probably not. It's time for Tom's Journal. And welcome to another edition of Tom's Journal. So, welcome to the edition. Jamie. Yes, sir. Facebook posts which went completely wrong. Does anyone have an urn I could borrow, please, for the weekend? Yes, we need it, and mine's broken on me. A hot water urn, by the way, not an ashes urn. But, <laughs> well, I wish I said this earlier, because I just tipped my nan into the back garden. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where that was going for a minute then. <laughs> oh, so good. The loudest sounds on earth. Concert speakers. Fireworks. Mm-hmm. Gunfire. Mm-hmm. A blue whale. Mm-hmm. A space shuttle. Mm-hmm. If you have a Morrison's Moore card, please scan it now. <laughs> Fucking hell, all right, love. Jesus Christ. Yes, I can oh, say now. As we both know from working there, fuck me, they are right. They are unnecessarily loud. Yeah, like, fuck, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> I am still awake. What is going on? <laughs> Woo! Sheesh. That's their way. That's what they have to say to humans. We yeah. sit magpies and say, curato and kestrel, and then the Morris's Morcard has to do that. <laughs> what would you do if you could be invisible for a day, I'd go to Paris and beat up a mime. The round of applause he'd receive from his audience would be unbelievable. <laughs> to be fair, are you doing him a favour or are you being a bastard? I'm not really sure on that one. Probably being a bastard, but still, it's still absolutely unbelievable. Jamie, you know how when you go to a concert or a show, of some sort. And the person on stage is like, how's everyone doing tonight? And the audience cheers back. Why? You're not really answering the question, are you? You're just yelling. Imagine if we did that in daily conversation. <laughs> hey, Jeff, how are you? And Jeff starts screaming and clapping in your face. To <laughs> <laughs> fair, when I'm at a gig and they say that, I normally go, fine, thank you. <laughs> Good to deliver near me, but I still do it. Oh, okay, because obviously that's how your brain works. That's how I, yes. yeah. Because I'm an idiot, yes. I'll say it. it you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is probably one of my favourite entries into the journal that we've ever had. Okay. Because it really makes me fucking laugh every single time. Um, 
How do I say fuck you politely? <laughs> With all due respect, intercourse Ooh. yourself. <laughs> I like that. That's great. <laughs> That's clever. I like that. I still have intercourse yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh, so good. <laughs> God, I really miss the days when your mum told you how many biscuits you're allowed at one time because now I see the whole fucking pack. Fucking A, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking nightmare for biscuits. I have to get Becky yep. to take the pack off me. Yeah. Really? I really eat the fucking uh, lot. Yeah. <laughs> I love So biscuits. I always go, I'll have, I'll have four. And I'll leave it at that. Oh, two more do. Yeah. Oh, two more do. Maybe three. Right. And then you're three quarters of the way through. You're like, fuck. There's no point in keeping these, is there? Come I on. had cookies yesterday. <laughs> I had cookies from Sainsbury's. The big, the big fuckers you get four in. Yeah. And I was like, I'll have two now and I'll save two for later. And I was watching AEW just like, <laughs> just dunking away. And I went, oh shit. <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> I've even done it before. Like, I'll take some out and I'll put the packet back in the kitchen cupboard and I'll go sit down. I always get up and just go fucking get the rest. I make the effort. Yeah. I try. I make yeah, the effort. I'm proud. Yeah. At least get your steps I in. Effort, yeah. <laughs> that gets good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll burn at least half a cookie. I'll go yeah, there. exactly. It's sorted. <laughs> so you're entitled to another one. <laughs> me. Never judge a book by its cover. Also, me. You can fucking tell that's a fucking crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> so true we all do it <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck it up oh. Oh. a guy in class got called on to answer a question and after a short pause he says hang on I'm not dumb I'm just panicking I felt that the guy next to me felt that your mum felt that the world felt that <laughs> I'm just panicking. I'm using that. That's fucking beautiful. <laughs> Next job interview I have, I'm using that. I'll give you a few more. I don't know how wine is considered so girly. That shit can fuck you up, man. And 90% of the girls out there drink it like it's fucking Gatorade. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> It's so true. Like th there is a reason people call it wine drunk. <laughs> yeah, oh, I yes. personally can't drink the stuff. I don't like it. But I've seen the state of my wife after drinking a couple of bottles. So uh, yeah, a couple of bottles. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. It's like a fucking squash to her. <laughs> Friend, why? Why are you so upset? Me. I didn't make my school's basketball team. Friend, but aren't you homeschooled? Dog walks past wearing a jersey. <laughs> That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> oh. oh, God. And finally, Jamie, you all eat ass and suck on toes, but God fucking forbid there's a tomato on your hamburger. <laughs> And that is an edition <laughs> of Tom's Journal. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because it's so true. <laughs> oh, I don't need pickles. No. Oh, tomato. Oh, God. oh shit. No, no, absolutely not. Can't do that. Has to be. <laughs> It's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I, I know that people can change. Uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there guys, we are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. 
If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Ma 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 Mr. Stevens. Like it. Yeah. It's I forgot the song. I just, had, I just had this song on my head. <laughs> Jamie is a dancer. Something Jamie, <laughs> Jamie. Jamie feels it everywhere. Jamie, 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 Jamie. It's all lyrics, so I just thought I'd sing it. You know. <laughs> it's audience participation. Audience participation time. <laughs> Fuck a trip over words there. It's not Miami. What song is that? Getting jiggy yeah, with man. it. Jiggy jiggy with it. I knew it was Will Smith. I was just yeah. like, <laughs> "Fuck, I can't work it out." Participate, bitch. Participate, bitch. Participate everywhere. Participate, bitch. Participate, bitch. Participate, bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's participation challenge. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> Good. I just remember the other song I wanted as well, so I said the first <laughs> As brought up in Tom's journal a couple of weeks ago, this week we are asking you to simply depluralize a movie title. What say you, Mr. Stevens? Have you got anything oh, for this? I completely forgot to even do this. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. I realize now. Shit. <laughs> no, I was going to say The God's Son, but you guys are not depluralizing it, is it? No. Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm now panicking because. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I'm just no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Let's get some audience answers as we didn't fucking think of it. <laughs> we got an absolute fuck ton of answers from TikTok for this one. So we're going to go to TikTok first. Uh, Niela 03 just says, instead of three men and a baby, just a baby. I like that one. Tony Brew. A Dalmatian. Nice. This one, I like it. This one really made me chuckle because it took me a minute. Instead of four weddings and a funeral, just a funeral. <laughs> it just said a funeral. I was like, what is that? Uh, <laughs> it took me ages. Luke Dickinson, plane, train, and automobile. <laughs> That's clever. That's really clever. <laughs> this one also made me laugh from Lee Noble, Ocean. <laughs> That's really good. This is really clever because is it depluralized or not? McWibs gone in a minute. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, That's what really you're clever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one true Ryan, Avenger. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock's The Bird. Just one bird. <laughs> Not scary. <laughs> Former guest Kevin Rhodes John says The Expendable. Just, yeah. just one guy. <laughs> Darren Stevens, The Man in Black. <laughs> just one. Just one. <laughs> Amy Mousy gives us two. Really made me laugh. Lord of the Ring. Wait, I think that one actually exists. <laughs> and the Mighty Duck. Just just one hockey player. It really changes the outcome of a film. Yeah. Harrison Smith, the Duke of Hazard. I love that one. It's clever. <laughs> and last but not least, it's the wonderful Mally Malpass. He's gone above and beyond. Like, He's given us movie posters. I'm going to put them on the screen as well for these. Well, sorry, there's one without the movie poster and two with the movie posters. The one without is, this is fucking brilliant, A Crow on the Orient Express. <laughs> Had that quite a few times. That is fucking brilliant. And then 
good fella. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. one. just one. And my um, personal favourite, Reservoir Dog. <laughs> super. It's super. Excellent. This was we love that. Great. We had some great answers for this and really enjoyed that one. Ah. <laughs> Oh, what can I say? Thank you. Good work. Um, thank you, Barry. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Jeremy, for participating in Jamie's challenge on the weekly. We massively, massively appreciate it. Um, if you enjoy Jamie's participation challenge, Tom's journal, Callum's treachings, the boo ra ra and hoo chaka chaka, <laughs> and uh, the interview, then you'll enjoy the other 137 editions wherever you get your podcast from. I wouldn't go and start at the beginning now, though, because that's a lot to get through, and we talk a lot of shit. Um, we'd like you to come and follow us on all social media at TCO Pod, uh, or come onto our YouTube and subscribe to us at The Chronicles of Podcast. So that's all social media at TCO Pod, and YouTube subscribe at The Chronicles of Podcast. What's that, Jamie? Before we get out of here, let's say a massive thank you to a few of our friends. Every single piece of music you heard on today's show is brought to you by the wonderful singer-songwriter Matt Roberts. Go check him out all social medias at Matt Roberts Music. Tell him we sent you. Go give him a listen on Spotify to those beautiful, beautiful songs. I especially recommend Once Once in a Lifetime. That's our theme song. And of course, we have to say a massive thank you to Mr. Braden Barry and his Say We Can Fly dot shop. Head on over to say we can fly dot shop see what you like the look of it could be a hoodie signed lyrics cds no matter what it is add it to your basket and enter that discount code the chronicles and get yourself 10 percent off your order and well, that's, that's when... it check out anxiousghost.com as well oh yes anxiousghost.com as well Braden's secondary site we could say and of course the sophie lancaster foundation because they're stamping out prejudice hatred and intolerance everywhere this is a wonderful wonderful cause raising issues so people in the alternative community are not being treated differently because of the way they dress and the music they listen to it is a worldwide issue so please help us help them stamp this out and stop it happening to anyone else like it happened to sophie way back then and of course a massive thank you goes out to my beautiful co-host right here um I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> but I'd say a lot of people do it, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just join the fad, although I'm probably going to get done now, and it's meant to be like a menti, a, a, K, a KYI or some bollocks. No I don't way. fucking know, whatever menti be bullshit you kept throwing at me. <laughs> um, massive, massive thank you to William. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely superb. We love chatting to you, my friend. It was great. Uh, he took time with your insanely busy schedule to sit and chat to us. It really meant the world. Um, so thank you so much. Jamie, another glorious edition in the bag. Another glorious edition indeed, my friend. Absolutely love it. And as for this week, we'll see you all next week for the Chronicles of Low Lives. Goodbye, everybody. Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Bye. Bye.